walls, right? So let's let's go to the meat though. We got egg and the, the egg in the black lodge. These are both places that are talked about the entire storyline and are key areas of the story, but you don't truly get to access until the end of the story. So although Agent Cooper does have all these dreams where he gets to go to the Black Lodge, he doesn't actually get to physically go to the Black Lodge until the end of the story. And the Egg Link's Awakening, that's where he actually goes at the end of the story too. It's the key place to, well, what will happen? You know, it's like, well, that's where you find out is did the windfish actually, if, if he goes to the windfish, will it actually kill, every, kill everyone off? If he goes to the Black Lodge, will he actually be able to maybe, well, I don't know, kill Bob? Right? You're kind of left to that. Like, what does this mean? Uh, Deputy Hawk said the, uh, the, the Black Lodge was the shadow cell for the White Lodge. Uh, the legend says that every spirit must pass through there on the way to perfection. They will meet your own shadow self. Well, inside the egg, we actually she see shadow cells, right? We see like the nightmare gel from, uh, well, Legend of Zelda, right? Remember like Zoles and gels, right? They kind of like would go around the little castle areas. You know, you also got Aghanim, right? So he's someone, he's he's dead, right? Essentially, we took out Aghanim, although he was a spirit after another, but um, once again, another avatar. But Aghanim, we have uh, Moldorm. We have even Ganon. Ganon comes back, even though Ganon's been, you know, was defeated in, you know, Link's Awakening. We actually have Ganon coming back, too. And we also got, uh, well, Land Mola, which Land Mola's been always around in the story. And uh, so these are actually all the spirits that are kind of been taken, and they're the dead, right? So if you think about it, in the Black Lodge, everyone's dead, right? Except for, like, Agent Cooper, where you see another version of Agent Cooper, right? But he's also the hero, too. So if you think Link, and this was, some, I don't think this had anything to do with Twin Peaks, but in uh, The Adventure of Link, which was, you know, a couple of years back, you had a shadow version of Link, but that was just whatever. I think that was just uh, consequential, or consequential. But in this, you actually have a direct relation, that when you go into the Black Lodge, you see... Well, the living versions of, de of dead people. When you go into the egg, you see the living shadow versions of dead enemies of the past. No, I think they were like, you know, they were, they were like watching, you know, Twin Peaks or something. You can make your own correlations, but I just think it's kind of neat. Then we also got Death Old too, which is sort of like the spirit of death, which is sort of the wild card of it all. And if you think about it. Dethel was never like, well, doesn't represent any of the dead, so it was never truly alive, or maybe it's, this is its only form. And sometimes people, uh, there's a speculated that that actually is the main nightmare and I'm with it. In the Black Lodge, you also got Bob. Bob was actually, if you would, well, well, we'll show a picture of Bob, but Bob was actually just a hair, like a hairstylist or something, the hairstylist set designer for Twin Peaks. But they saw Bob in like a mirror or something by accident. They were like, wow, that guy just looks great. <laughs> and that's like evil Bob. That's why you never see him anything else. Because he was like a hairstylist, set designer kind of guy. He wasn't actually, you know, like uh, building a career like, you know, some of the other, other characters, etc. So we kind of go away from that. All right. Go back to a little uh, well, big stuff. So we got Laura Palmer, right? The kind of spirit creature Laura Palmer. Spirit, spirit creature of the father, of course, you know, of, Le of Leland Palmer, right? Cool line he said, well, never mind. I won't say the line because you just, you just see it yourself. Um, and then uh, also we got Bob right there. Bob's never actually been dead, so it's kind of interesting. When you, you only when you see Bob is actually when you see Cooper, right? Or, well, you see this part of actually, in the, just in the scene right here. Then you kind of got Cooper too, and then, yeah, it's like kind of all the spirit versions. Even they kind of have these like whitish kind of eyes kind of thing, which sort of shows that they're not quite who they are. So you're always left questioning that in Twin Peaks, and you're also left, always left questioning that in, um, well, in Link's Awakening, which is pretty cool. So we also got the, uh, the man from some other place. Cool fun fact on him, and I, I learned about this recently, is, is that when you read when you watch Twin Peaks, and you should watch Twin Peaks, it's really worth your time, is that we got Mike. There, Mike is the man who who used to be with Bob, and Bob was an evil spirit, and Bob can incorporate into other people. Then Mike kind of rolled with Bob, but then Mike didn't like it, so we I guess that was someone that was kicked into some the tattoo on his arm, and so he cut off his arm, and so he freed himself from this, like, well, the right-hand man of Bob. And that actually is the man from no, from the man from somewhere else. Because he's little, right? He does some cool wiggly dance. And he doesn't talk real. He talks backwards, like I was saying. So it's kind of neat, right? Like, even he's sort of like the spirit of the dead. Um, yeah, that's the Black Lodge. That's the egg.
So we also got kooky characters, really great characters across both stories. I mean, in Twin Peaks, you actually have close to 50 different unique characters, which is kind of like unprecedented for like, you know, a TV show back then. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, that's so many people to like keep track of. I mean, you know, we got great ones. We got, you know, Nadine Hurley, right? I mentioned her earlier, right? She like got an eye patch in her eye. She got shot in the eye by like her husband. And, and she's becoming like this really weird, strong cheerleader chick thing. And just very strange. Like, I don't even know if I've ever liked her as like a character, but I sure as heck remember her <laughs> as a character. She's like mildly, it just makes you uncomfortable. And sometimes that's, that's a thing, right? You know, good argue creativity. It's like, it's like, you know, it's not about... Um, always if you like it, it's that like if you think about it, if you remember it, you know, it brings you things. But the Log Lady, I think everybody universally likes the Log, log Lady. Like, I don't know, if anybody, I wait for the day that someone that has a Log Lady costume on Halloween because I want to get a picture with them. I just think the Log Lady is really great. I mean, she either, like, talks to you and then she references to her Log. Her, her Log, if I remember right, is, like, her dead husband or something like that, you know? Um, yeah, the, the Log Lady is amazing. Kooky characters, right? She's, like, the key of it. And, you know, one of the people I'm thinking about, too, is Agent Cooper. Agent Cooper is the hero of the story um, for Twin Peaks, and he's awesome, yeah? And, like, he has such great one-liners, and he has a, a great, like, he's sort of the the one from another, from another area, right? Like, how Link is from another land, like, he's, he's not from the island, while everyone else is. Same thing for Agent Cooper. And yes, there's also, um, you know, his boss or whatever, but, but he kind of comes in as a cameo, but Agent Cooper's still the main antagonist, in that he's the one who's from another place, right? And I see a face. He's, he's from a place and he's sort of adjusting to this new environment, right? And then, I don't know, he's just great. He's just, he's, he's funny, he's interesting, he has a serious moment. I mean, I really wish that guy the best like, in his career that he's done. And he has done well, right? If you think Dune, he's that guy from Dune. Okay, let's kind of go a little deeper on there. So now, kind of referencing to Link's Awakening, uh, we have kooky characters all over the place. Like, here's all the uh, photographs, minus one that was just the same on the upper left-hand corner, if you're just curious, you're just a quick for it. But we got, like, the, you know, we got Chomp Chomp kind of showing up, right? He hangs out with Taryn when she goes on a hill. We actually, like, talk to a fisherman that's like a lonely ghost that we go. Heck, even the photographers, he's got the little tiger, like, stuff like that. He follows them too. We got Shopkeeper. We have all these different, um, Uluru, you know, Taran Marin. We have all these different characters throughout the story. I mean, you also got the little frog prints in the upper, and the lower right hand corner is just frogs and stuff like that. And that, um, it's really dynamic, right? Like, I love hearing about all the stories, you know. I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that, like, you always kind of remember, right? You always remember, like, I don't know, the story. The story is always really great. So, David Lynch. David Lynch, you could directly connect David Lynch through affecting Link's Awakening, in effect for, his, for having suspicious character types, and maybe perhaps a little more, right? Take what you want from this. Now, to even like, you know, to affecting every Zelda game after that, you know? I mean, he put creative endeavors in something that had nothing to do with video games whatsoever. And it made a difference in the world in unprecedented ways that, you know, you kind of think about. And that's, I don't know, I think that's something special. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed um, my kind of uh, Link's Awakening, the Twin Peaks connection. I hope it kind of answers these questions for you if you're kind of interested. Um, yeah, ask some responses, that kind of stuff, if you have any questions or if you have any more information. I always love to hear more stuff. You know, it's kind of neat. Also kind of a little bit of the story too is that if you never die in Link's Awakening, then Marin actually gets to survive. You actually see her on wings kind of like floating off. So yeah, um, enjoy this and more. Um, check out, you know, my YouTube. That's obviously you're there, right? And also on Tumblr too, the VGH. And uh, okay, until next time.